For, I would say, six years of our existence, FACS found sponsors for legislation, and that was great. And we found two or three people that supported those sponsors, but it never went very far. In 1998 and 1999, there were even bills to just try to study the law. And in 1998, Governor Wilson vetoed it. And in 1999, Governor Gray Davis vetoed it. I have trouble getting not people to agree with me. I've done, been pretty successful at that but getting people to vote what their views, own views are. Why should I take a hit from the guards union when the governor's not going to sign it anyway and it's not going anywhere? I would take the hit if it were going to actually make a change. The prison guards union is contributing God knows how much money to keep three strikes enacted. At least the last 20 years, there has been a very close alliance between the District Attorneys Association and the Prison Guards Union. You walk in to the legislative hearing and present this very rational piece of legislation. Afterwards, in walks the Prison Guards Union and in walks the California District Attorneys Association. And guess what? At the end of the session, it's over. CDA is not evil because it's an interest group. Sue Reams isn't evil because she formed facts. That's just the way the system works. That's the legislative process. If the prison guards were to come in and say, we want more pay, because this is a really hard job, or we want better guard to inmate ratios, I'm with you on that one. That's, that's in their interest in rock and roll. That's what unions are supposed to do. But when they say, we want Sue Reams' son to serve a life sentence for being 30 feet away from a crack cocaine deal, that's got nothing to do with uh, working conditions. That's setting public policy for the state of California uh, in, a, in a very disturbing way, and they back it with enormous amounts of cash. This is people who gave millions of dollars to Gray Davis, who subsequently gave them billions of dollars of, of raises and, you know, opposed any kind of rational uh, prison policy. That stinks to high heaven, and I think you're in a better position if you just say it and say, yeah, we happen to link arms with a group that stinks to high heaven and, you know, it serves our interests. But I don't, I don't, well, think, I don't, think, I would, I don't say CDA is linked arms, but what's, I mean, what's the result? What's the, you don't believe that um, the guard union, whatever they're called, should be able to do that. What do you believe should be the result? Should they be foreclosed from coming in and arguing their position? Should the ACLU be foreclosed from saying that that's somebody not, they should, should be, be able to argue? There should be limits on how much money they can give. Okay, well, that's, I, well that's, a, that's a completely different debate. The more prisoners there are, the more guards they need. So the more members they have paying dues. Yeah. It's quite simple, isn't it? It's not, it doesn't take a math genius to figure out why the prison guards union, and they don't campaign openly, they just give money to every candidate for any office in Sacramento. They all get it. Anybody that wants to accept it gets it. I said, what if you turn it down? I asked some of the legislators, and they all gave me the same answer. Then my opponent would get twice as much, and I would get nothing, and I would lose the next election. You go down the list, they have given everybody money, and you're not going to bite the hand that feeds you. My hope is that the court is going to say that misdemeanor conduct, shoplifting, cannot be the basis for an indeterminate life sentence and then provide relief to at least 340 people in California whose third strike was petty theft. Then my hope is that the court will turn to other trivial offenses and say that they too can't be the basis for a life sentence. Leandro Andrade received a sentence of life in prison with no possibility of parole for 50 years for stealing $153 worth of videotapes from Kmart stores. Videotapes included Free Willy 2 and Casper, and um, these videotapes, he, he, he stole them from two different Kmarts. Because he stole them from two different Kmarts, he got two counts, and he got 50 years to life. And the Ninth Circuit was saying that in these cases where there was petty theft or shoplifting, that it was considered cruel and unusual punishment to give these people 25 years to life. The U.S. Supreme Court is saying, 
wait a second, do we really want this to happen? Should we let the Ninth Circuit be the final word in this? The Supreme Court said that courts should defer to legislatures when they decide what's the appropriate punishment for recidivists. And thus, the majority of the Supreme Court found no constitutional violation in life sentences for shoplifting. On a five to four vote, meaning only one justice made the difference, said that it was not cruel and unusual punishment. The fact that this guy had no violent crimes, none, all property crimes, none of which were considered, quote, really serious. And for them to say it was not cruel and unusual punishment means that there is no judicial review of any of this. They've abdicated their responsibilities completely. It'd be one thing if they said, uh, we're going to throw out this case but not the law, or something like that. But to not free even Andrade was, as far as I'm concerned, tells you how bankrupt this Supreme Court is right now. There is no other state in the country where Andrade could have received a sentence of 50 years to life for shoplifting. Andrade's sentence was not just cruel and unusual, it was truly cruel and unique. As Justice Breyer said in his dissenting opinion, prior to California's three strikes law, no one in the history of the United States had received a life sentence for shoplifting.